Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to kind of graph the logarithmic equation. Now, basically, I think the best way to graph logarithmic equations would obviously be using graphing technology. But if that's not something that you're able to do, I want to at least kind of um, explain to you the basic you know, parent graph of the logarithmic equation, and then kind of use you know, what are some basic and easy ways to be able to graph it. So the first thing is when we're looking at a logarithm, you know, there's a lot of things that you're going to see. y equals you know, log of x, y equals ln of x, y equals log base b of x. And these are all different types of logarithmic functions. When it's log of just x, we know that the base is t we say that the base is going to be 10. When it's y equals ln, that's what we call the natural logarithm, where the base is going to be e. And if we have log of y equals log of base b, which b can represent any number, and then of x. So um, the best way that I'm going to use is I'm going to use some very simple numbers to us to kind of see what exactly this graph looks like. So I'm going to use y equals log base 2 of x. And the best way for me to be able to um, kind of represent what the graph would be is, or any function is to always create a table. Now logarithm gets a little difficult because we don't really, you could use arbitrary values. You know, when I did my exponential function, I just plugged in any number I really wanted to in for x, and then I was able to find my y. Well, this is a little bit more difficult because remember the logarithm says 2, you know, raised to what value x, I'm sorry, 2 raised to what value y is going to give you x, right? So I'll say that again, because if you were to convert this into exponential form, it's 2 raised to the y equals x. So 2 raised to what value gives you x? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to kind of work backwards. Even though y is the um, dependent variable, I'm going to kind of treat it as the independent variable and plug in some values that I know I can plug raise y to. So let's go ahead and raise y to the um, negative second, negative first, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm kind of working backwards here. So if I rose 2 to the negative second power, that means I would have 1 fourth, as I explained before. As if I raise 2 to the negative first power, that means I would have um, 1 half. 2 to the 0 power would be 1. 2 to the first power would be 2. And then 2 to the second power would be 4. So basically, what's that saying is, if I was to plug in 2 to the 1, if I was going to plug in, let's just plug in 1, log base 2 of 1. If you plug that in your calculator, log base 2 of 1, you would get the answer, which would be 0, which is correct. All right. So I kind of worked around here a little bit just to see what this graph looks like. And if you were to plot this information, what you see this graph looks like is it looks like this. Okay. So when looking at the graph, you can see that, all right, so here's the graph. And what's going to happen is as I keep on getting smaller and sm as I keep on getting um, smaller and smaller numbers, more numbers, then I'm going to go keep on going shooting down. Now notice the x's don't go negative. And why? Well, because 2 raised to what value gives you a negative number? You can never take a positive number, raise it to a power, and then get a negative number. So that's impossible. So that's why it never crosses this act. That's why it never crosses the y-axis. Um, so you can see, as far as like a domain and range perspective, you can see that the range is from negative infinity to infinity, and the domain is from 0 to infinity. Now, when we're looking at this, um, how do we going to apply transformations? What happens when things start changing? So what we can do is, here's your kind of list of parent graphs. Those all kind of boil down to a times log base b of cx minus h. All right, let's just do x minus h plus k. OK, so those boil down to your basic transformations. And so again, just like we've kind of discussed before, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. I like to rate, relate this to the quadratic function, because um, when we're relating this to the quadratic functions here, uh, you can see that um, you know, a, remember, like stretch and compress the graph. Well, that's going to be the same thing what a is going to do here. a is going to be stretching and compressing your graph. Um, your h is going to be shifting your graph left and right. That's going to be the exact same thing here. k is going to be shifting your graph up and down. The only other thing I want to mention um, with that is, um, oh, is also this, we didn't really talk about having a value like c in front of the x for quadratics because it was reflected about the y-axis. However, we can also have values that are in front of my c in this case. 
and when doing that, it's very, very important to make sure that you understand that C, if C is negative, it's going to reflect about the y-axis. And C also is going to have some stretching and some pressing. Um, remember, A also reflects about the y-axis. That's also important to kind of know. So, um, but those are kind of some very, very, very important kind of characteristics. And again, I'd advise you, more likely than not, you know, I'm not very st stingy on my students as far as like the stretching and the compressing of the graph. Obviously, for graphing technology, we'll use that. But it's a good thing for you to know as we get into my, as we get into the examples of how to graph logarithmic equations. You're basically going to take the parent graph and then look at the transformations and then just apply them to the graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your logarithmic equations. Thanks.